No matter what kind of car you drive, we have an insurance policy that's right for you. Need to insure your family minivan? We've got you covered. Need insurance for that new sports car you finally got? We've got you covered. Have an old beater that just won't quit? We've got you covered. Or maybe you hit the lottery and want to insure all your new cars. We've got you covered. Call Auto Insurance for Less to find out how much you can save right now. All it takes is just one call. Answer a few questions and before you know it, we've We've got got you covered. covered. Call 1-800-679-0366. That's 1-800-679-0366. Auto Insurance. You want it, you need it, and we've got it. Call Auto Insurance for Less to find out how much you can save today. Better coverage at a better price is just a phone call away. Call 1-800-679-0366. That's 1-800-679-0366. Turnpike Sports Book Report. The Turnpike Sports Book Report is brought to you by BorgataSports.com. Your favorite casino is now your favorite sports book available anywhere in New Jersey. BorgataSports.com. Sign up at BorgataSports.com using our promo code PIKE, that's P-I-K-E, and you get a risk-free bet up to $300 and 20 bonus dollars at BorgataCasino.com. Must be 21 years or older and in New Jersey to place a bet. Terms and conditions apply. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. All right, and this week's Turnpike Sports Book Report, we have uh, seven states releasing their February sports betting numbers. Actually, one milestone for a state as well. Uh, we have launches both retail and online. We have a bunch of deals to talk about, lots of legislation as usual. And uh, one big incident that happened in Tennessee over the past weekend uh, with regards to one of the sportsbook licenses down there. Yep, yep. Let's start with the uh, revenue uh, handle and revenue numbers for February. Like I said, we had seven states reporting handle and revenue. Uh, I'm sorry, seven states reporting handle and revenue. Six states, uh, really just one state not reporting any handle because it doesn't. That's New York. They never report revenue, uh, handle. They do revenue only. Uh, start off with New Jersey's February numbers, $742.9 million in handle. Uh, 92.7% of that total handle was online. They had $689 million as an online handle for the month. Uh, gross revenue was $46.2 million. That's an increase of 171% year over year from February 2020. Yeah, I'm reading a lot of articles saying, you know, that the numbers for New Jersey were flat. I guess everyone's expecting a big bump from the Super Bowl, and I guess they really didn't get it. Well, the one thing I always notice, the Super Bowl bump happens in January. Yeah, no, a lot of betting happens in January. I mean, you know, Super Bowl is basically prop betting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, so February, it's... I noticed, was, for for Jersey at least, eye gaming more so than online sports betting and retail sports betting. And when you're talking about iGaming, iGaming is the online casino, online casinos, not the online sports books. and online poker and things yes. like that. So, um, six point two percent hold for February. Golden Nugget Online, Tropicana, and Harris all reported negative revenues for the month of February. Uh, casino sports betting revenues. This is casinos only. Resorts Digital led the way with seven point seven million in revenue. Borgata was second with four, just under five million dollars in revenue. Overall, the Meadowlands licenses, which is FanDuel and PointsBet, mm-hmm. uh, they brought in uh, over $27 million in revenue. They led everybody in the state. Well, anyone who's ever gone up to the Meadowlands, uh, that's basically uh, the another borough of New York City. Because yeah, you, you go up there and it's just all New York people, which is great. I mean, I'm, I'm glad they're coming over. I'm glad they're spending their money. But I think that's what New Jersey's worried about when New York goes mobile. You know, I honestly gonna, don't think they're going to. They're going to worry about dip. that. But you know, I, I don't. There's something fun about going to a sports book, placing a bet there, and watching the game there with a whole bunch of friends. You know, you can't do that mobily. So um, you know, it, it's one of those things. Where I, I'm, I'm very curious to see how. When New York gets mobile sports betting, how that's going to affect the attendance at the Meadowlands? It's it's going it's going to be different. I don't think it's going to be as much as what people think because, again, like you said, 
it's an experience going to that sure. physical book at the Meadowlands, especially on the football Sunday. You know, and just speaking for myself, when you go to when I go to a retail sports book and watch the games, I'm usually betting on my phone anyway. Yeah, I'm. Re- I'm I rarely go to the you know, the uh, window and place a bet because you know what. I'm sitting down, I'm enjoying a beverage, or I'm enjoying food, and why should I get up and go to a window when I can take out my phone and place a bet? The one thing I'm waiting for are some of these retail books to start offering special promos like the online books do, where you can only get it at the window. Interesting, yeah. I, I pr- probably after everything opens up a little more yeah. and people start getting out to the sports books and things like that, I think you might be able to see that. Well, moving over to Pennsylvania, they had a February handle of five hundred and nine and a half million and a revenue of sixteen point four million. A thirteen point four million dollar revenue for online sports betting versus two point nine seven million retail. So most of it again was online for uh Pennsylvania. Uh they had three times the amount of revenue generated in February of last year. Uh Valley Forge Casino led in both total handle and online revenue for the state. Wow, okay. And the newly launched Live Philadelphia, first month for their numbers. Uh, retail handle of $2.9 million, nothing in terms of online because they don't have an online partner yet. That should be very interesting because Live Philadelphia is right in the uh, stadium district. And once it's starting to open up and once the Philadelphia Phillies start bringing in crowds again, and uh, it's right there. So that, that will be the... Uh, Talk about great tailgating. You just go to the casino and you're tailgating right. I think they share a parking lot with the uh, stadium. And they're overlooking some of the stadium. Some of the rooms Absolutely. So a lot of people are going to go there before the game, place a bet, have a couple beers, then go walk over and go see the baseball game. It should be be a fun thing. Uh, Going over to Michigan, they announced their online sports betting numbers. They had originally done their retail. Uh, week before this, so okay. this is just online sports betting. They brought in three hundred and one, almost three hundred two million dollars in online sports betting uh, revenue of nine point four seven million. Taxes of one hundred forty two thousand dollars. Once you adjust the revenue, though, uh, after you get rid of all the promos and the free bets and all that, uh, they had a negative ten point seven seven million dollars. Okay, I mean that's expected. Yeah. Every new market. I mean, if you don't, if you have a negative revenue, don't be worried about that. You're going to see it go up anyway. Well, you're going to you're spending a lot of for advertising. Yeah. You lost the That's promos, the marketing like push. you said. The marketing really is. Uh, you know, once they find their market, you know, once they find their audience, they'll they'll be doing fine. Uh, Washington D.C. released their February numbers. They had a combined retail and online sports betting handle of fifteen point three million. They've only got two books to report: Gambit D.C. and William Hill. William Hill actually has the retail location of the stadium as well. Um, Gambit had a handle of four point one six million. That's down a million down a million from January. Um, they had six hundred thousand in revenue. William Hill had a handle of eleven point one four million. That's up almost six hundred thousand from the month before. Revenue of seven hundred thirty two thousand uh, dollars. I'm going to move ahead here a little bit because we got a lot to talk about down the road here. Uh, Oregon brought in. $29.6 million. That's a decrease of 15.3% from January. Revenue had a significant decline, 30%, down to $2.68 million from the month before. First time for Oregon that table tennis was not in the top uh, top sports. I wonder if table tennis has a season. Is is that one of the reasons? Well, we'll find all, out. All, Col- I know we'll about find table out tennis, all I know about table tennis is I lost money betting on it a couple months ago. Well, when Colorado releases their number, that's the key because Colorado, Colorado has a huge table the, tennis that's population. Table tennis uh, season there. That's uh, top sports: basketball, seventeen point four million; football, three point four; soccer, two point three; tennis, one point nine; and hockey, one point seven. Uh, table tennis did register. They had 17,000 bets placed on table tennis in February. Okay. Averaging almost $60 a bet on table tennis for a total of a million dollar handle for that sport. Okay. Uh, Mississippi is has reached a milestone. They finally broke the $1 billion mark. After- this is the entire time they, they're in existence, they hit the billion. Yeah. For handle? For handle. Okay. This is all without mobile betting in that state. 31 months it took to reach a billion dollars. It would have been quicker with online, I guess. You know? Well, they've had plenty of chances. They just can't seem to pass it. All right. Well, 
And uh, they brought in for February $47.8 million in handle, $4.6 million in revenue, and they had almost a 10% hold for the uh, books. Uh, we had a bunch of launches and deals to talk about here. Launches, North Carolina, as a matter of fact, I, I think you brought it up in the Bet Flash. They had two retail books open just right before the, the tip off of March Madness. It's a great time to start a uh, sports book, huh? Two Harris books. Actually, they're both called The Book at whatever the property is the Harris Cherokee Casino and also the Harris Cherokee Valley River Casino. Both are The Book at because they're uh, Caesars William Hill books. Where have I been to The Book in New Bally's. Jersey? Bally's. Okay. I don't know if it's called The Book anymore. It's because uh, they changed I, I hands. I think it's William Hill or something. I don't know. But, uh, Golden Nugget uh, got a uh, sports betting license in Virginia, and also they got a temporary permit to st- to start accepting sports wagers. Uh, Bally's was issued one for Virginia as well. Let's see. FanDuel and Bally's opened their retail sports book in Atlantic City. Speaking of Atlantic City. You know, we've been to a lot of the openings in the sports books in Atlantic City, but this one was by far the quietest. Yeah. You know, usually there is a – what was there a celebrity that cast the first bet there, or was there someone cutting the ribbon? I mean, I haven't heard anything about it. Well, again, it's different times. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and this was a Fally's uh, – Fandle – Fally's. Fan, Fandle retail book. Uh, speaking of Fandle, they opened up a retail sports book uh, at the Fer- what was formerly known as Fairmont Park, as well as opening a retail sports book at Club Hawthorne in Prospect Heights. So they've got three books there. Mm-hmm. Uh, Penn National got their online sports betting license for Virginia, and Churchill Downs launched their Twin Spires online sports book in Tennessee. Okay. Uh, there would have been six books in Tennessee, but given what happened with Action 24-7, there are five right now. Are, are we drifting into the 24-7 uh, little discussion by little. now? Or little no? by little. Oh, no, you're going to tease that for later? Okay. Well, I want to get into some of these other deals because okay. uh, one of the other things that happened was the NFL announced their broadcast deals. Oh, yeah, absolutely. that was huge. One of the deals was with Fox Sports. Fox Sports is also part of Fox Bet. And in the press release, it was buried in the press release. I think it was like the fifth bullet point down or something. Uh, Fox Bet will receive authorized sportsbook operator status if and when the NFL approves official sportsbook operators for the league. Well, they certainly do advertise. First, first time we've seen that. Yeah, no, well, they certainly do advertise a lot in the uh, pregame NFL shows. I mean, I saw that a, a lot during the football season. You know, like I guess one one of the contests was win Terry Bradshaw's money or something like that. I think that was all tied in to the Fox Bet app. And well, you got to remember, should, it, that, it's going to be. I guess it's going to be even bigger now. You, you got to remember that's the network. Sure, that has nothing to do with the league. Oh yeah, yeah, I know, I know, no. This but, is the but, first uh, time the league has even included something like this in any kind of press release. Well, too. like I said, the leagues are really accepting of it. They see the potential of sports betting, you know, All the that uh, kicking and screaming. Fan engagement, I mean, it's a, it's a far cry from where it was a couple years ago. I mean, hey, I just had an interview with the VP of gaming at the PGA Tour, so the uh, professional leagues are really They're starting it. Starting to, I, I wouldn't say embracing it, but you know, understanding the realities of today's uh, sports business. I think they're embracing it now. Yeah. I think they're embracing it. Well, all that kicking and screaming to go through court yeah, to get to yeah. this point. <laughs> now they're all for it. And you know what? I, it, it, it makes it a fun experience for the fans. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, Bally's became an authorized gaming operator of Major League Baseball. Uh, this is their third league uh, that they've partnered with. Uh, they will also be incorporating betting uh, options, innovations, whatever you want to call it, into the broadcast of MLB games on their 19 regional sports networks. Mm-hmm. Uh, speaking of their sports network, their first one is going to be launching soon. Bally Sports Arizona, which is the regional sports network for that region, will be launching at the end of the month, March 31st. Bally's is acquiring a lot of stuff. I mean, just tons and tons of stuff. They're constantly in the news. I mean, for all you poker fans, I read stories about it looks like Bally's is the front runner to get the World Poker Tour, to buy the World Poker Tour. So that's, that's still going just on. So. One, one of the, I, it's amazing what Bally's is doing this, by, these by last the time, couple of months. By the time this airs, we may have an answer about that. Yeah, I hope so. So, uh, But the one thing Bally's does not have, they don't have cornhole. Yes. 
But DraftKings does. That's the DraftKings uh, province there. American Cornhole League has designated DraftKings as its official sports betting partner. Uh, besides getting the rights to logos and player images from the Cornhole League, uh, you're going to see free-to-play games. You're going to see odds bro- odds and lines broadcast during select Cornhole tournaments, which are on ESPN, by the way. Yeah, no, it's it's been lots of fun watching it. I mean, but does this mean... We can bet on it, or is this? Are it's we betting be on it soon? It's only in certain states, right? now. Only in certain states. So, um, okay. Oh, I guess it'll it'll help that DraftKings is involved for the approval process. Well, from what I understand, New Jersey does not allow cornhole betting yet. Hopefully, so. that changes. Yes, I know. I got to start betting on cornhole. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, One more thing. WinBet uh, partnered with the Richmond Raceway down in uh, Virginia for uh, the WinBet Lounge. Uh, so we're going to start seeing some NASCAR offerings, some enhanced NASCAR offerings uh, from uh, WinBet for the NASCAR Perfectly fans. Perfectly honest. I mean, I, I've seen the commercials here in New Jersey. I'm just not familiar with WinBet. You know, I, I haven't seen it. I, I should take a look at it. They are the most quiet sports book. I would well, like say. I said, I, I've seen commercials for them in New You're Jersey. You're starting to see I, more. I'm starting to see more and more. But, uh, no, i, I got to check them out. I mean, uh, you know, it should be a it, – it wins a great property, uh, so I should really take a look at it. A couple of things with BetMGM. Uh, pointed Jalen Rose as a celebrity ambassador. And also BetMGM's Buffalo Wild Wings deal that we talked about last week. Yep. Uh, Pennsylvania still hasn't launched it yet because okay. they have some issues with the geotechnology tracking software in that state, so they got to wait till that launches before they can actually incorporate it into the beta, uh, to the Buffalo Wild Wings restaurants in Pennsylvania. You know, I, I go to two Buffalo Wild Wings, one in New Jersey and one in Massachusetts, and uh, I'm assuming, given these deals, that it'll be a very different experience in both of those. Yeah, well, you'll <laughs> be able really, to, you'll uh, be able to see the the bet the bet MGM channel the Buffalo Wild Wings is launching, but you won't be able to bet. Sports bet in Massachusetts. Oh, so you mean in Massachusetts I'll be able to see the content, I just can't do anything about You'll it. You'll be teased. I'll be teased. I'll, I'll be wishing I'm in the uh, the Buffalo Wild Wings in New Jersey. Right? Any of them. Any of them. Any, any, any other one, anywhere but here. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's get to the uh, big story that happened the first week, end of March Madness. Tennessee action 24-7. The local Tennessee sportsbook operator had their license suspended. Mm-hmm. The site was shut down. Uh, a lot of things, a lot of moving parts to this, and um, it suffice it to say there were allegations of credit card fraud, um, out-of-state betting yeah. via proxy. Yeah, when when you see anything in a news story that says proxy, it means that someone inside the state is getting money from someone outside of the state in order, in order to bet on their behalf. Yes. So that that's what proxy means. And, the, again, credit card fraud, money laundering. As a matter of fact, they had an emergency meeting the same day the story broke. It was on a Friday. Um, what, in, in, an inst- in one instance, and this, this I thought was really interesting, the investigator for the Tennessee Education Lottery, which runs sports betting in the state, um, received information from someone over at Tennessee Action about suspicious activity going on, uh, the activity happened on the 8th or the 9th, but they reported it on the 17th, which was a violation in and of itself. They're mm-hmm. supposed to report it within 24 hours. They didn't do that. But um, a, the investigator looked at all these different transactions that were going on. One of them stood out immensely. Uh, it was a valid deposit, first deposit by one account. Uh, and this happened multiple times. One account, valid deposit, then all of a sudden, once that deposit was set up, that account was set up with real information, multiple credit cards and debit cards were used to deposit more money that weren't associated with the personal information that's in that account. Okay. So basically, credit card fraud. Okay. Uh, and then that was all withdrawn into that one account. So there's where the money laundering came in. Okay. They had this multiple times, supposedly, in terms of, I think they had like 48 accounts. That did this mm-hmm. thousands of times. You're talking tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands. Again, they're still looking into this. Um, according to the board of the Tennessee Education Lottery, Tennessee Action 24-7 had nothing in place to prevent this, and they were slow to report it. Okay. So they shut down the site. It's a it's an indefinite suspension. What would they call it? An, an indefinite 
suspension. temporary suspension. It's an indefinite, an indefinite suspension. It's not temporary. They not they shut them down. Oh yeah, I know that they shut them down. Yeah. But it, I, I, what I, well, I guess what one report was saying that um, Tennessee Action Twenty Four Seven now has an opportunity to appeal and also cure the problems. And I, and I guess a statement from Tennessee Action said they're look, looking to solve all the problems to get their license back as quickly as possible. Yeah, and uh, again, they have time to cure it. Uh, we'll see when, they, when they're when they able to. I think there's got to be a whole lot of hard look at some of these uh, procedures that they're trying to implement. According to the board, they had they, they represented that they had them when they got the license, and they weren't using them. Well, that's according to the board, right? That's according, so, to, the well, I, that's I guess, according to the board. Well, like I said, you know, they're go- I'm, I'm sure there's going to be more hearings on it. And I'm sure there's going to be um, efforts to cure. Okay, that's what Tennessee Action Twenty Four Seven said. So uh, it should be interesting to see what what procedures they put in place or what procedures they have to fix in order to get their license back. The one thing this. Regardless of Tennessee twenty four seven, I hope they get their license back. Absolutely. They're, they're, Absolutely, but again, in a national sense, the independent books that are launching, like Bet House, and there's a couple in Iowa, there's a couple in Illinois that are that are going to be launching soon. They're all independent; they're not the national mm-hmm. brands. This is a this is a warning shot to them. Absolutely. Well, they have to look at this, and they have to look at what procedures they have to put in place, and what procedures they really have to focus on, in order to you know effectively adhere to the license and effectively, you know, stop any problems with regard fraud or betting out of state or anything like that. Also, it brings to the to the forefront, you got to report this immediately. Absolutely. Don't sit on it. Yeah. So it, it just brings into question a lot of things. Again, they have they have the ability to cure and get their license back up and uh, running and everything else. So and I guess they, we'll they're, see they're, what like I said, I think they're appealing and I think they have yeah, a place to cure. And so, you know, the... It's certainly not the end for Action Twenty Four Seven. I think they uh, are, hopefully it's not the end. Yeah, well, I, I think they have time to cure, and yeah. they said they're going to do it to hopefully get their license back. Well, that's it for the book report this week. Anything we didn't touch, and there was a whole bunch of stuff we did not touch because I wanted to get to the Tennessee Action story. Uh, head on over to Turnpike Sports Radio blog. Go to TurnpikeSportsRadio dot com. Click on the blog button. And the stories we did talk about, and a bunch of other things in terms of legislation, other deals that we didn't hit as well as other states' uh, February numbers, they'll be up on the blog. Well, that'll do it for us this week. We'll see you next time on the Turnpike. 